secondary cells. These are the cells which can be recharged on passing electric current. Say when they are getting uh, discharged, they are giving out electric current and they can be recharged by passing electric current. These are known as storage cells or accumulators because electrical energy can be stored in them. The examples are lead storage cell and nickel cadmium storage cell. So let's first discuss about this lead storage cell. See, this is a lead, lead acid storage cell. Right? This is the picture of it. This is the battery which is used in automobiles. What is there? See, there is a grid plate. Then a positive plate is there. A negative plate is there. Positive is what? The cathode, the anode. Negative plate is the anode, right? So there is positive plate, negative plate, again the positive, again the negative. And in between there is a microporous separator. Right? So these plates are packed. See, this is a positive plate pack. There is a positive cell connection. And a negative plate pack with a negative cell connection. This battery consists of six cells and each cell consists of the stack of positive and the negative plates. These are immersed in the electrolyte which is sulfuric acid here. Right? The sulfuric acid uh, here is used as the electrolyte and it is 38% by mass and its density is 1.31 gram per cubic centimeter. See, this is a complete picture of the cell, the battery. A battery consists of six 2-volt cells connected in series. See, these are cells which are connected in series. Each cell is generating how much potential? It is generating the, the uh, potential of 2 volts. Right? Now, this each cell consists of the stacks of positive and the negative plates. Each component cell is composed of several negative and positive electrodes made up of pure spongy lead and lead oxide respectively. The electrodes are connected in parallel and these are immersed in dilute solution of sulfuric acid. I have told you. See this is, this is the grid of lead with lead oxide and the grid of lead with the spongy lead. These plates are in the solution of sulfuric acid. Sorry, it is H2SO4. These plates are in the solution of H2SO4 in water. Right? This H2SO4 is 38% by mass and its density is 1.31 gram per centimeter cube. Right? Now let's see the working of the cell. It is the most frequent used cell in automobiles. The voltage of individual cell is only 2 volts. So 3 or 6 such cells are joined in series to get 6 volt or 12 volt battery. See here, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6, uh, six such cells have been joined to get the voltage of 12 volts. Anode, it generally consists of number of plates joined in parallel. Each plate is a grid of lead filled with finely divided spongy lead. It's a grid of lead with a finely divided spongy lead. And cathode, it consists of equal number of plates connected in parallel. Each plate in this is a grid of lead packed with lead oxide. So here the plates which we are seeing, see this, this plate, this is the, uh, it is consisting of the number of plates, right, which are connected in parallel. So what is cathode here? It is a grid of lead filled with lead oxide. And what is anode here? It is a grid of lead filled with spongy lead. 
these are not very thin plates these are the uh, number of plates stacked together which are connected in parallel i've shown you in the previous figure also see here these are the stacks of positive plates and the negative plates right these plates are say within this plate within anode there are number of plates which are joined in parallel and anode consists of grid of lead filled with spongy lead whereas cathode consists of grid of lead filled with lead oxide and within these these stacks are connected by the parallel are joined in parallel see here these plates these are joined in parallel okay these plates these are joined in parallel these plates are arranged alter <coughs> alternatively separated by thin perforated plastic or fiberglass sheets so in between these plates what is there the thin perforated plastic or fiberglass sheet between the anodes and the cathode the electrolyte here is dilute sulfuric acid and the whole arrangement is suspended in dilute sulfuric acid which is 38% by mass and density is 1.31 g per cm3 taken in a plastic or hard rubber vessel the electrode reactions which occur during discharging are see these are the electrode reactions which occur during discharging what happens lead combines with sulfate ions and forms lead sulfate giving out two electrons at anode whereas lead oxide which is present at cathode combines with sulfate ions the h ions present in the solution and takes up two electrons given by the anode forming lead sulfate and water so the overall reaction is lead with lead oxide plus of the hydrogen ions and the sulfate ions forms lead sulfate and water now in this case what is happening sulfuric acid is being used up this is the discharging reaction when the cell is giving out current when current can be obtained from the cell so this is the discharging reaction during this reaction what happens h2so4 is used up so what will happen to the density of h2so4 it will fall it falls below 1.20 g per cm3 that is when it falls below 1.20 g per cm3 the battery needs recharging h2so4 is the electrolyte and it is used up the density of the electrolyte it is 1.31 g per cm3 it is 1.31 not 1.1 and after discharging what happens the density falls below 1.20 when it falls below 1.20 the battery needs recharging that is current is supplied to the battery let's see what all reactions take place when the battery is recharging and students do remember these reactions these are very important reactions it's simple lead present in the anode combines with sulfate ions forming lead sulfate giving out two electrons these electrons are accepted by cathode that is the lead oxide combines with sulfate hydrogen ions and takes up two electrons forming lead sulfate right do you know what is the oxidation state of lead in pbo2 what is it it is plus 4 the oxidation state is plus 4 whereas the oxidation state of lead in lead sulfate is plus 2 so it takes up two electrons forming lead sulfate this is the discharging reaction now let's see the recharging reaction recharging during recharging the cell is operated like an electrolytic cell what happens in an electrolytic cell the electric current is supplied so that the reactions within the cell can take place now electrical energy is supplied to it from an external source the electrode reactions are reverse of those during the discharging see uh, during discharging lots of lead sulfate has been formed right now during discharging what will happen this lead sulfate will break up so the recharging reactions are reverse of the discharging reactions lead sulfate 
will take up two electrons forming lead solid and sulfate ions. This is the reduction reaction. Lead sulfate will combine with water molecules forming lead oxide. Sulfate ions, hydrogen ions will be formed and giving out two electrons. This is the oxidation reaction. Do remember this recharging and discharging reactions. Right? So, the cell after the uh, recharging is complete, the cell gets completely charged and again ready to give a current. Recharging is possible in this case because the lead sulfate formed during discharging is a solid and it gets stick or it sticks to the electrodes. Therefore, it can either take up or give electrons during recharging. See here, during discharging, lead sulfate is formed on these electrodes or gets sticked to these electrodes. And H2SO4 is used up. When the density falls below 1.2, then the cell needs recharging. When the electric current is supplied, whatever lead sulfate has got sticked to the electrodes, either accepts electron or loses electrons. See, it accepts electrons forming the lead, that is the spongy lead, and it loses electrons forming the lead oxide. So, this is how the uh, car battery or a secondary cell works. There is one more secondary storage cell or secondary cell that is nickel cadmium cell. Let's see how it works. Nickel cadmium storage cell. Again, anode is cadmium, cathode is nickel oxide, electrolyte is potassium hydroxide. The reactions which take place cadmium combines with the hydroxyl ions which are present in potassium hydroxide. It is, of course, aqueous, forming cadmium hydroxide, which is a solid and giving out electrons. It is very important for you to know the oxidation states. See, the oxidation state of cadmium here is 0, whereas here it's plus 2. That is, it has lost 2 electrons. In case of nickel, it is plus 4. Nickel oxide combines with water, takes up 2 electrons and forms nickel hydroxide. Here, the oxidation state becomes 2 and hydroxyl ions are formed. The complete reaction here is Cadmium, nickel oxide solid with water forming cadmium hydroxide and nickel hydroxide. See, both are solids here. Right? So, after discharging, what will happen? These solid products are formed. What are the solid products which are formed here? Cadmium hydroxide and nickel hydroxide. Both of them, they stick to the electrodes or they adhere to the electrodes. Now these reactions as the products which are formed during discharging are solids. These can be easily reversed. They, re they stick to the electrodes. They are available there and when the recharging takes place, they again form the this uh, cadmium solid and the nickel oxide solid. The reactions can be reversed. As after discharging, products formed are solid. Do remember this. They adhere to the electrodes. Hence, the reaction can be reversed during charging. As no gas is produced during charging or discharging, the cell can be sealed. None of the gases is produced over here. It produces a potential of 1.4 volts. The cell has a longer life than lead storage cell and is used in cordless appliances that is phones, pagers, mobile phones, electric shavers. Right? So this is also one type of the secondary cell or the storage cell because the current can be stored in this so it is called as uh, storage cell. There is one more kind of cell that is called as the fuel cell. Let's see what is a fuel cell.